Hello guys, today we're going to continue the 3D printing series and what we're working on today is a pallet fork attachment for the rear link of either a Siku or a Britain's tractor that's sort of a, a standard uh, rear link connection We started off here with the connector that we made in the very first video of the series so it's just a, a simple connection that we're probably going to use in nearly every video that we're uh, trying to create something that's going to attach to the rear link of the tractor. What you can see me adding the dimensions in for at the minute is actually going to be our uh, forks themselves, so the, the actual part that's going to mate into our pallet or our maybe a, a bin that has a pallet fork option on it. So uh, this is actually the dimensions uh, for the pallet or for the forks themselves and the, it's not based on any sort of real uh, rear link pallet fork design or anything like that basically uh, i had previously created a pallet fork that i'd made with the prusa i3 printer or the ge tech i3 printer that i have and i had a pallet associated with that and these are kind of the dimensions that I've found to work pretty good. They're quite stable and it's quite easy to maneuver the tractor uh, into position with this size of a, of a pallet fork and the load stays quite stable as well. So that's why I'm, I'm going with this again. The 3D print series is all about things like this, all about attachments and accessories that we can easily make with our 3D printer. So if you're enjoying the series and you want to keep updated, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and get the bell on so that you get the notifications. And now I'm starting to add a bit of uh, structure to our pallet fork. So if we look at the old one again, you'll see that it was very, very basic. Uh, there wasn't much shape to it. It was pretty much a square with the two forks uh, coming out of it. Uh, I even had to drill a few holes and glue in some copper wire to get it to uh, uh, to make the attachment part because uh, we couldn't get that sort of accuracy from the older printer. But with the new printer we can add a little bit more detail. So what I'm trying to add in here is the sort of common uh, three point triangular shape that you would see from an attachment on a, a real tractor even though we don't have the third link to attach I suppose we could try and make something but it's not really necessary what, uh, what we are getting out of this though is we can add a little bit more detail just to make the, the model uh, look a little more realistic As always, if you're looking to get any more information on any of the 3D prints or any of the models that you might see on the channel, it's uh, generally a good idea to head over to our website, rctractorguy.com, because there's usually a webpage for pretty much all of the, uh, the models and the attachments that we're making uh, on the channel. So, for example, on the tractors, you might uh, be looking for the code and you know, maybe a wiring diagram. So, a lot of the pages have those up already. And uh, I try to add a little bit uh, every couple of weeks to, to add to the, to the website. So, if you're looking for build information, that's the place to go. And as always, if you have any comments or suggestions, uh, make sure and head down to the comment section below the video. There's a lot of people watching the video and uh, a lot of different opinions on how to uh, do different things for your RC tractors or your electronics or your 3D printing. There's a lot of people there in the sort of community that uh, have a lot of different ideas and can all help you out. So don't be afraid to share your opinion and don't be afraid to ask questions. And there's also the forum on the website so if you want to head over there to ask a question too, that's another uh, Adding in all these uh, little bits of detail can be pretty time consuming but you know once you've this done once you're gonna have 
this sort of uh, triangle shape there available for all your future designs. It's kind of like the connection done in the first video. Once you do it once, all you have to do is copy it and you can reuse it in the in some of your next builds. So it's good to get it uh, right this time, to spend a little bit of extra time and get it to a point that you're happy with it. And of course there's no right or wrong so it's kind of nearly an art form uh, in some respect you can kind of design these things in any way you want. The only parts that you have to make sure you kind of stick to the rules are the parts that are going to connect to the CQ tractor itself or if you're designing another part that's going to join with this part at some stage you have to kind of remember those dimensions and just make sure that everything is going to it together but other than that this is all just aesthetics it's how it's going to look so i decided that this sort of triangular shape was going to look well for my palette fork design but uh, maybe you'd rather a different sort of design maybe you'd rather a square design rather than a triangular design maybe you don't want it to be uh, tin bars you want it to be a solid bar or you want it to be round bars a lot of different options and realistically they're all right it's just the way that you want your 3D print to turn out that's all that really matters finally getting to the end of this little bit of a aesthetic design so all that's left now really is to select all the parts that we want to extrude and then just extrude them ahead. We won't extrude them too far because this part could hit the link arms on the tractor if we over extrude it. And that would probably mean that we wouldn't be able to get the link arms to sit flat on the ground when the tractor's trying to reverse we'd probably end up with the a slight tilt upwards towards the end of the pallet fork which given the length of, of the fork itself would probably be quite high and could end up hitting the, uh, the, the pallet that you're trying to reverse into so we don't want to extrude it too far the great thing about a CAD package is you can make little adjustments, take another look and kind of revert back to your original if you have to very easily. So that's what makes it, it a lot easier to do these kind of things nowadays, not to mention that we can 3D print the part instead of having to try and hand make it or anything like that. Looking at the model here, we can see that our new frame section is likely to be in the way of the link arms here. So, if we go back to our sketch, it's only a matter of just uh, moving over the, the line or that particular rectangle and then just move it out of the way of the metal links on the tractor. So that'll give the links a little bit more purchase underneath the uh, underneath the frame basically and it should result in a slightly stronger slightly stronger model without impacting on that uh, nice sort of uh, three point frame that we've, uh, we've built up here. As we look at the model again, we see this sort of a weird uh, section where there's, uh, it kind of looks like there's a spot missing. So we'll just uh, add in a little uh, section here to, to fill up that space, uh, just to make it a little bit better looking aesthetically. Uh, we kind of need this area here uh, for, again, for support of the, of the uh, pallet forks and the load. So we can't take too much out of the model um, to try and change the shape. 
well that didn't quite work so we'll have to just go back and reselect the, the parts that we want to uh, to extrude or well unselect the parts that we don't want to extrude is really what we're doing so as you can see here pretty simple fix to that problem and that's just because we deleted those lines and the software uh, tried to reinterpret where we had wanted to extrude but obviously it's not a simple thing to do it's not simple to, to know exactly what the user wants to extrude so you know just have to go back and fix that every once in a while It looks like the model is pretty much there uh, in terms of the frame, the three point frame, that's kind of what we want to see. So the last thing we really have to do is just add the forks themselves. So pretty simple, now that we have a frame we can just click to the two points on either side of the fork, select them and extrude. Again, these are just going to be the dimensions that I used for the original pallet fork. Just nothing, uh, nothing special about these dimensions. Although they will uh, work pretty well with the pallets and uh, pallet bins and different things that we might be creating later on in the uh, 3D printing series. So if you are designing these yourself, uh, well. If you're going to change the dimensions, just make a note of them, and when we make the different parts later in the series, just make sure that uh, that you update it to your own dimensions. Well, that's our palette for complete. Hopefully, you enjoyed that video, and I'd say probably the next video will be us setting it up, getting it ready for the 3D print. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks very much for watching.